Hi, everyone. Welcome to Wine.com Experiences. I'm Gwendolyn Osborne. We are so excited that you're here today to taste and learn with us as we talk to our two legends, John Charles Boisset and John Legend. Um, first, I want to acknowledge that so many of you submitted questions beforehand. Thank you so much. A lot of those questions um, were already kind of part of our Q&A, so we've gone ahead and incorporated those in. So most of those we'll be able to answer as we go through our interview today, but thank you for participating, and we're going to try to get as many of those answered as possible. Also, for those of you who have purchased wines beforehand, go ahead and get those bottles open, get some glassware, get the wines poured. If you need some snacks, grab some. We'll be tasting um, a little bit um, into this and we want you to be ready and prepared. If you don't want to open both bottles, that's okay. Choose one. This video will be living on on the wine.com YouTube channel and you can revisit it when you're ready to taste the other one. And so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our two guests, our legendary Jeans, if you will. Um, first, we have Franco-American winemaking icon, John Charles Boisset. Welcome, John Charles. Bonjour! Bonjour! Great to be with you. It is very good to see you, Jean Charles, as always. And you're as always. Being. And of course, our other guest, who is a um, renowned musician, artist, philanthropist, and, and now I guess he can add wine producer to his name, John Legend. Hello, John. Hello. Hello. Hello, um, how's everybody? Good. We can't hear them, but I know they're all excited and they're saying, yes, we're doing great. Um, so welcome to you both. It's great to see you. And I'm sure you're both actually excited to see each other virtually as well. Yes, it's been a while. And I know. It's so exciting. And and can you see how we beautifully match? I, you know, I, I was in John, so... John's wardrobe today, so he lent me a jacket. Uh, yeah. I feel <laughs> like I need to go find something uh, pink. Colored, uh, jacket. I love it. I'm, I'm very much digging the um, rosé theme here. I, I just picked pink flowers from my neighbor's yard, and that's, that's my, uh, <laughs> my thing. But um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and to share your stories and tell the story behind this wine. Um, I'm grateful, and I know all over 1,300 people on Zoom are grateful. Everybody on YouTube is grateful. We're just, um, thank you for, for the time. We're excited to dive in. So I want to get started with you, John. Um, so you're, you're a musician, you're an artist, a very accomplished one. What was your inspiration to get into the wine business, especially to make your own label? Well, I personally love wine and, and wine has been such a big part of my life and some of my favorite experiences in life from travel to great restaurants to just romantic moments, special moments memorable moments. Wine has been uh, such an important part of all of those moments for me. And um, I have heard from my fans all the time that my music goes really well with wine. So when you think about the pairings that you want with your wine, um, a lot of people have told me over the years that music is part of that for them. Uh, uh, and my music particularly was part of that for them. And so it just felt like a natural thing to do. Um, based on my own love and my own interest in wine. And, you know, I didn't want to do it unless I felt like I could do it credibly and with a great partner. And the reason why I decided, yes, let's go forward with LVE was because we found the perfect partner in Jean-Charles Boisset and everyone at Raymond Vineyards. Uh, they are exceptional at their work. They ha have a tradition of excellence and high ratings and and acclaim around the world. He uh, is personally, uh, I, I, I agree with you, he's a legend in the game of wine. And- um, Thank you, John. <laughs> would um, teach me, would guide me, would help me, would inspire me, and uh, allow our partnership to be something really special. And I found the perfect partner in John Charles Bosset. And here we are, we created Legend Vineyard Exclusive LVE together, oh. and we're so proud of it. Well, how did, how did you two meet, though? Did you, I mean, did you just Google it? We or met through mutual friends. So, so my manager is related to um, one of the uh, top execs at uh, Boise Wines, one of the top salespeople, and he knew uh, 
that we were looking to collaborate with someone. And he said, I want you to just come up to Napa Valley and hang out with Jean Charles. I think you'll like him. I think you guys will hit it off and uh, maybe something will come of it. So I went up and visited, you know, um, and Chrissy came with me. We spent a lot of time with Jean Charles. He has such a beautiful property there uh, where Raymond Vineyards is, also his own home. And he's, uh, you know, so well established in that community. He showed me around. Uh, we became friends. We bonded. We bonded over music, over wine, over just a, a zest for life and great food and, and all these things. We had dinner together. I stayed at his house. You know, we just became friends and uh, we were excited to do something together um, to create this beautiful partnership. That's fantastic. Um, yes, I, I can attest that John Charles has a zest for life. That is a Absolutely. great way of saying it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, so with John, John Charles, it's easy to have a zest for life too, Gwendolyn. Yeah. But John Charles, I mean, I'm sure you're approached by so many people wanting to partner with you just um, because of this acclaim and, and your history in, in the area. What made you, you know, so certain that John Charles was the right partnership? Well, the person that John, 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 John Legend, excuse me. Well, absolutely, Gwendolyn. We, we are all the time. And the whole idea for us, if we ever do something with someone, one, we have to be friends. Two, we have to feel the energy. And John, as everybody knows listening and the world knows, he's very magnetic. He has this amazing radiant personality. And he's very intellectual as well. So when he talks wine, when he speaks wine, you feel it through his music and back and forth. So he's a poet. We all know that through his beautiful words and music. And he really understands wine. So for us as wine lovers, wine passionate people for generation, if we ever did anything with anyone, it had to be with someone, one, we adored, two, we admired, three, who inspired us, because that's the key. We, John, we have so much fun together. Besides being friends, he inspired us as we make wine. And the whole idea, Gwendolyn, was to make wine as well that complement what we do. So the LV range of wine, besides the rosé, the Chardonnay, the Cabernet, and the Red Blend, add another dimension to Raymond as well. They're very different. So with John, I think, one, we find a new friend, someone who really wanted to be involved in the world of wine and in Napa Valley and in France. And obviously with his beautiful wife, Chrissy, great energy for the world of wine that is really uh, contagious. And this is the friendship that the world of wine needs. This is the friendship I need and strive from. And this has been so much fun. And, and Gwendolyn, as making wine myself for close to 50 years uh, since birth, since birth uh, I've learned a great deal making wine with John. So that's even the most fun of it. Something to say. Um, so your partnership, and, and John, you touched on this of uh, Legend Vineyard exclusive. What, um, where did that name come from, and what do you try? What do you want to convey with that? Well, of course, it's love without the O. So it, we wanted it to be evocative of love, and so much of my music is about love, and so much of what I think wine should be about is about love too, about inspiring people, about about the uh, those beautiful moments that we get to share with the people that we love beautiful experiences that we get to share with the people that we love. And we just thought uh, this wine should be about love. And we thought Legend Vineyard Exclusive was a nice way to say, this is something special. This is something uh, that comes from me, but it's also about love. And we felt like that was the perfect little acronym for, for, our, uh, for our new partnership together. Well, I agree with that. I met my husband at a wine tasting, so I'll, you know, that, that's how it exactly. all goes. See? It <laughs> inspires. People it inspired. Come together. Yes. Um, so I know you started this the the LVE brand in Napa, but what sparked your your interest in going to France and the south of France, and especially with rosé? Well, I personally love rosé. Chrissy personally loves rosé, and it has been part of so many of our um, favorite wine experiences and part of our travels. And uh, of course, our travels have taken us to the south of France quite a few times. We've gone there personally on vacation. I've gone there to perform quite a few times and had so many beautiful moments there. And there's nothing like the South of France when it comes to Rosé. And uh, when we were talking about ways to expand our, uh, our offering of wines with Jean Charles, uh, of course, being a, a, the quintessential 
French American, uh, knowing how to to uh, be on this side of the world and that side of the world. Uh, Jean Charles <laughs> knew exactly where to go to get the perfect grapes for our rosé. His extensive relationships in France and understanding of, uh, of where we could source the best grapes for our rosé. Um, we knew he was the perfect partner for that. And uh, we, we are so proud of the rosé. I give it out to my friends all the time. I drink it all the time. It's a, a big part of our lives. Yeah, it's, it, I've tasted it and it's delicious. I won't even show you how far the bottle's already gone <laughs> for today. It's a little, a little embarrassing. But um, we're gonna yeah, try it too. <laughs> quintessential. But yes, I think John Charles does kind of define that Franco-American uh, yes. connection. Um, speaking of the wines, why don't let's taste them. We've got two glasses here. Um, I want to dive in with the sparkling. John Charles, can you kind of walk us through what we're tasting? Um, you know, just what kind of style should we expect in this sparkling rosé? Because it's just it's absolutely. A and, and Gwendolyn, I'm so glad you asked the question of John and the inspiration. John inspires love and passion in his music, and he exudes it in his personality. So what we really wanted to try to accomplish is a wine full of life with a lot of energy with a vortex of peach, pear, and eventually citrus that would really invite you to this amazing joie de vivre. Because John is in real life the way you see him on stage or you see him on all his performance. And that's what I love about John and Chris is they're very natural, they're phenomenally personable, and they really have a vision of what the wine should be. So John and I, and our team tasted a large amount of wine and Chrissy participated to it as well. So the goal here was to get all those phenomenal fruit that I just described, but with thin bubbles, with delicacy, with a very harmonious flair, with an allure that speaks the style of John and his music that caress your tongue without being too intrusive, that suggest and be harmonious. John's music is very harmonious, is melancholic sometimes, poetic, and is very inspirational. So we wanted a wine to be all of that. So we went to the Loire Valley and we went to the south of France and as well a little bit in Burgundy. So we sourced throughout the whole hexagon of France in order to get the best red grapes and white grapes to compose this amazing rosé. And I'm so excited about it because this has purity, this has elegance, and I think this has what, you know, John really represents, and that's what I love his music and his style, is a very high level of sophistication, and that's what I look for in sparkling wine. So it's, um, it's one of my favorite naturally, and I love the presentation. I love that beautiful packaging that comes from John's beautiful music, which is the rose, again, the rose which exemplifies romance and, yeah. you know, seduction. And that's what this wine is all about, is sophistication and seduction. Yes, it is, it is beautiful. The bubbles are so delicate. And that fruit, that, that, it's like a bowl of peaches in a way, but it also has a floral undertone. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's a lovely blend and a beautiful color. And, you know, John, if I may say as well, enjoys his bubbles. We spend many weekends and, it could be 10.30 in the morning. We're about to go to brunch, and here you have it. This is LVE Sparkling Wine Rosé. I think what I adore with this wine, whether you have it on its own early, on a Sunday or Saturday, or later in the afternoon, and you listen to John's music, there's peace and excitement. There's excess and passion. There's harmony and poetry coming together. And there's a willingness to celebrate. And... I think the, the key in winemaking is really to pair always the person who thinks of the wine. In this case, it's John and ourselves. And, you know, the moment you're going to live and bring the two together. And, and I think with John's music uh, and his latest music as well, this wine is, is fantastic. So, so, John, was your impetus to make a sparkling wine so that you could drink at 10 a.m.? Or, and listen well, to your music? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for that. I think it's great. <laughs> well, honestly, though, I think um, wine is to be enjoyed. And, uh, and part of the enjoyment is thinking about the kinds of moments you want to share with other people, um, the kinds of uh, settings you want to enjoy it in. 
and uh, it's, uh, I feel like you can't disconnect the, the wine, the taste with the feeling that surrounds it, with the environment that surrounds it. And uh, this is definitely a good Saturday brunch kind of rosé, sparkling rosé. It is. It's absolutely delicious. I love it. All right. Um, why don't we move on to the, the still rosé from Provence here. Um, so let's go through and taste that. John Charles, if you want to kind of go through this. Or, but um, John, were you looking for a specific kind of flavor profile or style when you were going into this? Like what was your direction coming in to make this dry rosé? Well, we've had plenty of rosé over the years. And one of the things I like about it, especially if you're going to drink something during the day, is when it's light enough so it feels like it doesn't weigh you down for the day. When it feels like uh, refreshing and has a certain kind of crispness to it that makes it feel like uh, it's not going to slow your day down. It's going to make it uh, refreshing and enjoyable. And so that kind of was a, a, a kind of a inspiration and a direction for where we wanted to go. But then we just get into tasting it. We try different combinations and and try to get it right. And every wine that we've put out with LVE, everything that we've done together has been blended by all of us together. Uh, we sit in the room with the blenders at, uh, at Raymond Vineyards and, and Boisse Wines, Jean Shaw and myself, and we just keep tasting until we feel like we've gotten it right. Perfect. So John Charles, this is kind of a, I know a classic rosé. It's Grenache based, um, yes. Provence. Um, it has kind of all those characteristics in it. And, and uh, Gwendolyn, I want to echo what, what John is, is saying. We've had so much fun blending. You know, a blending session could be austere, could be too regimented, could be too rigid. With John, it's a flow. When he goes to the piano, he comes back <laughs> and he really guides us in the inspiration. And this is really what drove me to really want to do that with John is the fact that it's a true collaboration and he truly makes the wine with us. So in the case of Stephanie Putnam, as an example for the Napa wines, in the case of our French team, same thing. So in this wine, what John wanted is a rosé with a présence with a corpulence, as we say in French, with shoulders, something which would be very noticed, a wine which would be quite powerful. So as you know, in the south of France, there's a lot of different options as composition. You could be Syrah dominant or Grenache dominant. So, which I love is John always asks as well, Chrissy, so we send him samples to his house. They taste it. They gave back some notes. We came together and... All together, we decided that Grenache should eventually be the dominant, which I'm very pleased because I love the power of Grenache. I love the richness of it. And when we listen to John's music, there's a lot of meaning. There's a lot of significance to the music. It's not just three words that are repeated 50 times throughout the course of a great sound. Not only he's at the piano, but the music has the power of a message. Here, I think the idea was to bring the south of France the Saint-Tropez, obviously the Provence, but bring a very prominent vineyards, Saint-Victoire, on the Montagne of Saint-Victoire. As you know, when you lay on that mountain, you see the absolute amazing view of Mer Méditerranée. You see on the north side, the unbelievable influence of what has pushed Van Gogh, Manet, Monet to paint, the light, the scenery, the sunset, and this unbelievable, unforgettable moments. And I think John described it as such. And when I taste this wine, when we designed the bottle to have all the radiance underneath, and this was really a fantastic contribution of John. He wanted the bottle to look amazing in an ice bucket at the pool when he puts it on the piano. And then a wine which had... I really feel a tremendous amount of aroma. So as you taste it, and all of us tasting it together, you have all the red berries, but in a very seductive way. Yes, it's right there. Strawberry, raspberry, cassis. And with this white peach again, which is kind of, you know, and you fail. If you love roses, I'm a big fan of a rose garden, as you do, John, in your beautiful house. It has that white rose influence. So I really think that was the idea from John's 
directive and blending and blending and blending and creating that alchemy like he does his music really drove us i think to something which is close to perfection and it one of the things i love about the bottle mm -hmm. like jean charles was talking about the bottom is really gorgeous it kind of looks like a jewel yeah. at the bottom and then we have this glass top up here uh which is very easy to open and very easy to reseal and uh we find that very beautiful to look at but also very handy very handy um if you don't finish the bottle um exactly. and very environmentally friendly as well exactly and but, you know what um, happens john in his house with his uh, children like mine because they're not too far apart uh, my daughters refill the bottle with lemonade orange juice milk because the bottle is so pretty yeah. so the beauty it's an eternal you know, reusing of the bottle. So it's socially responsible. It, we use all of our water bottles for water on the table with uh, glass bottles, just like this. So absolutely, yeah. we just reuse it. Um, so yeah, I, I love this rosé. It is it is that classic bowl full of red berries, uh, that floral undertone, but I love the texture in this wine. Yeah. I think it has such great texture. And um, I think that is kind of differentiates it from some of the other uh, Provence rosés I've had. So well done, beautiful. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but I, I, I love that a lot of people put just their name on a label. And John, it sounds like you have been much more involved and, and hands-on. Um, so you've been blending, you've been traveling. Tell us, have you enjoyed that? What is kind of your favorite part? What part are you like, I have to be involved in this? this We've been involved be in every aspect. So my team design these bottles. We designed the, the Cabernet bottles you buy or the, uh, the red blend. All of this was driven from the same team that helps me figure out what my albums look like and what my tours look like. So it, it's very uh, holistic uh, and, and is all part of who I am and what I represent in my music and everything else I do. So we're very involved in the look and feel and everything of, of the wine. But of course, like we said, in the blending as well, and then uh, I get involved in the sales process. I go visit some of our retailers and our distributors and, and make sure we uh, understand what they're looking for and try to give that to them and, and interact with our customers. Uh, we wanna make sure this is a success and that it, it represents my name and my brand in the right way. And uh, we wanna be proud of everything we do together. And that's why I get so involved. I don't, I don't want to, you know, slap my name on it and let it do its own thing. Uh, I want to make sure that it represents me well in every way. And uh, that's why I'm hands on. Good for you. Um, and it's good handling. <laughs> the result is beautiful. Um, one of the biggest questions we got from our audience was um, the connection between crafting wine and creating music. They're both a form of art. What yeah. are the similarities that you have found in doing both I, of those? I think the similarities are, one, it's an iterative process. So you try something, see if it works, you try it again, you keep going back and forth. And then you, there, at some point you have to trust your own taste. So you, you have to figure out when you think something is done. And mm -hmm. it's a very similar process when you're uh, mixing a record or you're uh, figuring out the arrangement for a song you have to figure out when you think it's done. And when you think it's done uh, is very subjective, but what, it, what that feeling is in you is like, oh, everything's in harmony right now. Everything feels like it's perfectly placed. The drums aren't too loud. The strings aren't too loud. The horns aren't too loud. And when you're blending wine, it's a very similar kind of uh, judgment you're trying to make about it, is when everything feels harmonious, everything feels like it's exactly in the right place, then you know you're ready to send it out to the world. And that's exactly what I'm thinking about when I'm making music, when I'm mixing records, when I'm arranging them. I'm thinking that exact same thing. It's, uh, yeah, the big word I think in wine is balance. And yes. like that's what you're doing is you're making sure you have a balanced wine and you have that balance in music. Um, and honestly, of all of life, I feel like we should seek balance, right? It's yeah. very, very similar. And, uh, and what you're part of it, I say, is you're kind of minimizing the dissonance in your head. So uh, when things are off balance, you you feel this sort of dissonance where you're like, uh, it's like bothering you until until you fix it. And, and that's what I feel like when my mix isn't right uh, with my music. 
is it's off somehow and it's making me uneasy. And so I need to figure out how to minimize that dissonance and make it go away so it feels exactly right. And you just keep messing with it until you get it right. And part of the, uh, the challenge of doing either one with the blending of the wine or the mixing of the music is knowing when to say, oh, this is exactly right. Because sometimes you, you get in your head and you, you'll, you'll over, over engineer, over, over scrutinize, but trusting your gut and saying, okay, it's ready, put it out to the world. Perfect. Yeah. I like that harmony and music balance and wine and they kind of go together. So yeah. another well big audience question was if you could pair your wines with a song, what would that song be? <laughs> you know, I started thinking about doing a wine brand when I made my album once again, um, once again is one of my favorite albums and it has this romantic quality this kind of old school quality to it. Um, uh, it just felt like the perfect expression of where I was in my mind at that time. And I feel like that's when I started thinking I should do a wine brand was right around then. And songs like uh, Maxine and Maxine's interlude, they're these kind of lush, beautiful, um, timeless songs that I wrote. Um, and uh, that's when I first started thinking I would love to do something with wine. So I'm gonna say my album once again, but there's plenty of other music that I think goes really well with wine. I think Nina Simone goes well with wine. Wow. Um, yeah. One of my favorites. I named my daughter Luna Simone uh, right. after her. And uh, you know, there's plenty of artists that I think go well with wine, but of my own music, uh, my album once again, definitely feels like one of them. And my album Love in the Future, I think uh, feels like it's in that same family of music where it feels like it just goes beautifully with wine and love in the future was actually uh the album with all of me and um it was uh composed in 2012 and 2013 which happens to be uh 2013 it happens to be the year of our first cabernet that we did together for mm -hmm. Hobie. so um are there any songs that you you burst out singing when you're blending oh we <laughs> well he had the piano there uh, yeah we were, i've uh, seen it I was playing all kinds of stuff. We were having lots of fun. Uh, and the more wine I drank, the easier it was for me to sing. <laughs> I, I can speak other languages uh, when, I, when I'm drinking too much. So, um, OK. Um, well, we know Chrissy loves to cook. And we've certainly you know, seen pictures of you at the grill. And so what, uh, what are some of your favorite pairings for these wines when you're home with the family? So we do a lot of kind of spicy and uh, hearty foods at home. Uh, Chrissy's mother is Thai and uh, I'm a big soul food fan. So we make a lot of food that's very flavorful, flavorful, very robust, very spicy, very savory. And these rosés go really well with those kinds of foods. And so whether it's Thai food or Mexican food or soul food, all of them have a, you know, a robust flavor. They're, uh, they're savory, they're soulful, and these rosés go beautifully with that kind of stuff. Perfect. I also love them with um, like olives, like in the south of France, you get all those yes. yes. Just tons of olives with all these herbs and salt. And I just, a rosé with that is just not yes. so good for you. Um, so uh, philanthropy, this is just such a big part of who you are, which I just so appreciate and love. I know you did a concert with your wines with John Charles to help raise money for wildfire uh, relief for wine country a few years ago. What other philanthropic projects are you, are you doing that involve your wine? Well, the main uh, philanthropic product, uh, projects we've done haven't been uh, directly affiliated with my wine. We do a lot of work when it comes to criminal justice reform. We do a lot of work working with educators and trying to support teachers uh, who are doing the right things. And uh, we try to just make society better for people who are often not heard from and, and not, uh, not uh, they're a lot of times on the margins of society. And we try to give them a voice and make sure um, that folks who have resources are paying attention and doing what we can to help them. But particularly when it comes to the wine, we've done a lot in Napa Valley, uh, um, as you said, uh, there were the wildfires there, and we raised a lot of money to support uh, the recovery from those um, tragic wildfires that, that ravaged a lot of that uh, area. 
And uh, what I love about the Napa Valley wine auction and all the things we've done together uh, for Napa Valley is that they bring all these people who love Napa Valley, who love wine and uh, who have a lot of resources. They brought all those folks together to help people who were in need. And um, it's always good when you can find ways to do something you love, um, do a project that you love that is also really helpful for people who need help. Yeah, that was, I know that, and John Charles told me the number and I forget, but from your nap about, from the uh, wine auction that you do, um, donating your wine to that has brought in so much. And I know they yeah, have so many. dollars we've raised. And, and what we do is uh, we offer our uh, experience of my music and our wines. Yeah. And we, um, we auction that off and have raised millions of dollars um, to help people in need. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for using you um to bring back so much to you know not only obviously the napa community but also so many communities around um okay so we have like two audience questions um that had come in um one had to do with um i'm just going to name people because a lot of people ask the same question but i'm going to call out a few um shannon judy jeffrey cassidy and christina and elliot all wanted to know john what was your your favorite all-time wine to drink. And I think lo looking through some of the questions, I feel like it's more about maybe what wine kind of sparked your um, entrance into the wine as part of my lifestyle. Like this is, is about love. This is about life. Is, was there yeah. any region or grape variety or one wine that kind of sparked that? Or was it just a constant evolving well, um, it has been evolving, but I do believe that there are experiences that kind of push you in a certain direction. And, and uh, one of those experiences um, was spending time in Italy with my uh, future wife at the time. Uh, we were early in our relationship. We were traveling around Tuscany and uh, fell in love with each other around then. And also um, ha were able to have some really great wine experiences around then. I won't say that that region's wines are my absolute favorite wines, but with something about that time, about that moment that kind of pushed me in this direction and made me fall in love with wine and, and fall in love with my wife around the same time. This is way back in our relationship. You know, we, we started dating 14 years ago um, and I was in my mid twenties and she was in her early twenties. And um, we've had some beautiful experiences together, but some of them, uh, some of the best ones have revolved around wine. We end up getting married in Italy and, and we have some magical moments that we've had there. And the wine has been a part of that story. Yeah, well, they do make fantastic wines. Um, I've had some romantic jaunts through Italy too. It's a beautiful place, beautiful yes. wines. Um, okay, Alexis, Tracy, Lynn, Pedro, Joe, Steve, Kathy, John, Mark, Claudia, Jason, and Henry all asked about what are next steps uh, for the LVE brand? Are there any new regions you want to explore, varietal styles? Or we, just... haven't, uh, we haven't decided what we're going to do next, but we're really happy with what we've done so far. Um, we have done these rosés that we've been talking about today, but we've also done the Cabernet Sauvignon, the uh, Napa Valley Red Blend, and the Chardonnay. And we've also um, been working on some canned wine for the rosé as well. And so that's only been launched uh, in a limited way so far, but we hope to expand that in the future as we, we're seeing how people are consuming wine and, and think that's a, a viable way to go with the rosé. Good for, good so, for the pool. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Makes it very transportable. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that's one thing we're working on, but uh, those are the main things we're doing. And we're just trying to get better at what we do and then continue to expand our reach to uh, more retailers, more distributors, et cetera. Okay, any, well, I guess we don't really have any trips planned to go reach out to. to yeah, we, we, we're, we're, we're all hold. on hold right now. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Well, it's okay, it's okay, You'll, you, we'll get there. Um, so John Charles or John, is there anything else you wanna add or say about your wines or? Sing about your wines, maybe? Oh, uh, maybe John is a better singer. I could be on the oh, piano yeah. if you wish. I think he's better uh, at both than I am. What, what do you want to hear? We have any requests? Um, Let's do uh, Conversations in the Dark. That's a new one from the new oh. one. Talk 
Let's have conversations in the dark. The world is sleeping, I'm awake with you. With you. Watch movies that we both already seen. I ain't even looking at the screen. It's true. I got my eyes on you. And you say that you're not worthy. You get hung up on your flaws. But in my eyes, you are perfect as you are. I won't ever try to change you, change you. I will always want the same you, same you. Swear on everything I pray to that I won't break. Your heart, I'll be there when you get lonely, lonely. Keep the secrets that you told me, told me. And you love is all you owe me. And I won't break your heart. Thank you. Thousands of times going on in Zoom. Here, here. Hands down, favorite day in quarantine. Oh, yes. And uh, without the piano, can you imagine? Uh, he did it. Beautiful. Oh, so stunning. I'm, yeah, I'm sure with the piano, it's amazing, but just acapella was, oof, that is, um, that's stunning. Thank you. I mean, you. we love the wines. We love your music. I love the connection between them. I love your passion behind it, um, your involvement. I just, this is such a beautiful project. And I'm, again, so grateful that both of you took the time to come um, let me talk to you and also for everybody to be able to hear your story. Um, so I hope everybody at home is has enjoyed and thank you for taking the time to come on and listen and learn. Um, I hope all of every spring and summer involves a very full glass of rosé and um, that we're all able to visit again soon because we look forward to hearing more about um, what what this holds in the future and, and hopefully more events, um, more seeing you on the road and um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Gwendolyn, for having us as well. Thank and John, you. magnificent. We cannot wait to blend more. Cheers, Harvest everybody. is around the corner. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Okay. Take care. Thank you. It's both a science and a form of high art. It's made from the combination of grapes, sunlight, rain, soil, and time. It's raised up in the moments that matter. It's wine. And we are wine.com. We have the largest wine selection in the world, online sommeliers with free advice, and now our powerful new app puts the entire world of wine in your hands. Wine.com. Seriously passionate about wine. Download our free app today.